Friday night in Tryon, North Carolina, and uh, they're forecasting that we're going to see the teens tonight. Uh, it's hard to believe because when we woke up this morning, uh, it was uh, climbing from 40 degrees to mid-50s uh, just in a short period of time when the sun came out. But uh, nevertheless, it uh, is winter. We're looking at the subject of spiritual warfare. And I think most of us recognize that God doesn't immune anybody from spiritual warfare. It doesn't matter how good you are or how bad you are. God allows all of us to get into spiritual warfare. And uh, I think it would be foolish for us to say that God causes that spiritual warfare. As a matter of fact, there's a scripture that I want to share with you. It's James 1.13. It says, Let no one say when he is tempted, I'm being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself does not tempt anyone. I like all inclusive words. He doesn't tempt anyone. But we think about Paul, the thorn in the flesh. We think about Job, and we think about how he allowed Satan to tempt Job in so many different ways. To put Job in spiritual warfare. Jesus in the garden was anguished. If this cup could just pass from me. Peter wept, and he realized he had denied Christ. But God didn't cause any of those. God allowed it, but he didn't cause it. And he will not tempt you. Allow you to be tested, absolutely. But not actually cause the temptation. And then we need to remember another verse that goes right along with this particular thought tonight, and that's Luke 24, 38. He said to them, why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? If you really want another good tool for winning spiritual warfare, you have to come to the place when you examine not only your past history, but if you look at all of the characters of the scripture, you look at some of the godly men and women that you know in your life, and you come to a conclusion God can be trusted. God is faithful. And God has already promised us that he'll not tempt us above that which we're able and always provide a way of escape. And God's promised that he'd always be with us. He'd never leave us or forsake us. God told us nothing can separate us from his love. And part of the reason that we lose some of these spiritual warfare battles is because we stop trusting and start doubting. We start doubting God's ability to see us through whatever the problem is. And yet, Scripture is very clear. He doesn't want us to doubt. He doesn't want us to be troubled. He doesn't want us to lose spiritual warfare. But he wants us to build our confidence in him so that we trust Put our trust totally in him. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't do anything for ourselves. Uh, please don't misunderstand. God's word's very clear. He expects us to do what we can. We lose a job. He expects us to look for a job. Uh, we have uh, a debt. He expects us to try to find ways to pay that debt, uh, to work harder, smarter, whatever it might be. But God wants us to trust him. And in that trust, we'll find a peace that passes all understanding, knowing that he is capable. So when the doubts start to come into your life, don't lose the spiritual warfare, but trust him. Do all that you can, and then lay the rest on him, because he cares for us. That's your thought for the day. God bless you, and have a great day.